I can't even begin to imagine the pressures and challenges that come along with having to write weekly episodic television 52 weeks a year with no off season. It never stops when it comes to pro wrestling, which it should, like there should be a fundamental shift in how the business approaches things, especially from a television standpoint, but conversation for a different time. So I get that not just by nature, you do 52 shows a year, like you do 52 Raws, 52 Smackdowns, you know, for AEW, 52 Dynamites, 52 Rampages, you know, not all of them are going to be winners. I don't care how much you love a company or its product or its talents, its matches, blah, blah, blah. Like, you're being delusional if every single one of them is great. Like, it's just not feasible. It's not reasonable. That's not a rational thing to believe. There are naturally just going to be some that are better than others. And that's, that's the nature of the beast. But with that said, you shouldn't consistently be in a spot where you're putting out a product where seven eighths of it, or if you want to be a little more generous, maybe three quarters of it, you just fans don't really care about. Like they're not invested in. You just feel like you're going through the motions before you get to one or two segments or one or two things that your fans actually give a crap about. Because no matter how much those fans may give a true crap about those one or two things, that's not going to be enough to sustain you. You have to be able to do better. Like at least have three to four really quality things on a weekly show. But we know with WWE that certainly feels like a big ask, even with the shorter SmackDown show um, compared to Raw. Like You get shows such as this week where there's really honestly only one thing that really matters, only one thing you really truly care about, and everything else is just kind of boring and you're just waiting to get to that point. Now, I'm sure there are those that got a lot of kicks out of Sasha Banks and Tony Storm versus Charlotte and Shitsy. No. For some reason, fans love Charlotte 50 Faces of Flair. But at least I could say this. A match like this, you know, yes, kind of the old played out formula. You smash two different stories together into one. So that way you're avoiding the one-on-one -on -one matches between the key participants, but you're still getting them touched, like you're still trying to build heat. Like, I get that. Like, the fundamentals are here. But if you're asking me, do I give a shit about a shot, shot Sasha versus Shitsy feud? No, I don't. If you're asking me, do I really care about a Charlotte versus Tony Storm feud? No, the hell I don't. So combining them together into one long tag match doesn't mean that I'm going to care about this tag match. Now, maybe the Chicago crowd did. I don't know. It's not my business. You know, like, just for me, it wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. Just really weird. And another thing, you know, after this, you've got Xavier Woods backstage, and you've got the IC champion chanting for him. Why is this a thing? Why isn't your Intercontinental Champion in an actual story? Why doesn't he have his own feud and his own business to worry about? Why is he worrying about somebody else here? It just felt really, really weird. Um, yeah, another tag match. Viking Raiders versus Jinder Mahal and Shanky. And why do I care? Now, maybe perhaps you're building up the Viking Raiders to be next in line for a tag title shot, which, you know, hey, whatever. We need some fresh blood. We certainly don't need New Day versus the Usos for the millionth fucking time. I'm with you there, but again, why should I care? And I don't get with like Jinder Mahal. Like you bring him back and now you're jobbing him out? And I don't know. Then you get halfway through the show like that. I mean, I'm basically recapping. And for those of you that put way more value on the matches and the moves, you probably enjoyed a little bit more of this than I did. And that's fair. Um, but then you get to this segment featuring Mad Cat Moss and Happy Corbin and dealing with the stupid sword and the desk. And this shtick is so stupid. Like, did Vince just get done watching the sword and the stone before this segment got wrote and put out on TV? He just finished watching King Arthur stories like, what the hell was this? Now you took, and my single greatest annoyance with anything professional wrestling related in 2021, by far, by far, is what they did with Baron Corbin. 
They took bum-ass Broke Baron Corbin, a guy that the fans were resonating with, they were connecting with, a guy that was getting himself over as a babyface to a point where you were finally doing something interesting with his damn character and his damn career to the point where he could have been in a featured prominent spot for WrestleMania and it would have totally worked to now you put him in this dumbass segment because you just couldn't fucking help yourself because you just had to turn him heel for the fuck all of it because you're run by an Al Davis-like old man out of touch that has no patience, he wants everything now, where you've got the crowd chanting for CM Punk. Now, of course that's stupid. They paid money to go to this show. Why are they chanting for an AEW wrestler? Like, that's dumb and idiotic. And it's not behavior that should be encouraged or celebrated. Because it's fucking stupid. You want CM Punk? Then go buy tickets to AEW and watch CM Punk. WWE has convinced themselves they don't give a shit what you're chanting during the shows because they're in the reaction business now. But it is also really bad. You threw that segment out there knowing that this could potentially happen. It's not very good optics for your TV. And the segment was stupid. The only thing that would have made this redeeming, even though I know the crowd really popped when Drew pulled out the sword and everything, would have been if he wasn't able to pull out the sword either. Other than that, it was stupid. Ridge Holland versus Cesaro. So now he's running it back against Cesaro and he beats him in. Who cares? I mean, seriously, who cares? You got this stupid-ass Naomi and Sonya Deville shit. Just get to the point already. Like, this isn't helping anybody. It just isn't. You didn't need to do this with Naomi. You intentionally sought out to do this with Naomi. And frankly, the Sonny Deville character, unless you're truly just using this as an excuse to transition her back to an in-ring competitor, um, you didn't really need this either. It doesn't help her character. Like, it's stupid, but they have persisted with this. And this is not something that should be celebrated. This is not something that we should be happy about. Just like the USOs versus the New Day. I know they put on some banger matches, and they have really good chemistry in the ring. They know what they do, and they ought to. Because it's damn near becoming the Cena versus Orton of the tag team division. Really? Like even with all the people you've released over the past year, you should be able to come up with some new combinations, some new tag teams to do something different. So no, I'm not just going to sit there and sheepishly accept the Usos versus the New Day again. That's fucking dumb. So the larger point I'm getting at here is you're an hour 40 minutes into the show and everything about it is either stupid, unnecessary, repetitive, doesn't matter. All just to get to the one thing that truly does. And that's the stuff between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Now, one thing I'll give WWE here is that this has been done really well. And this week was certainly no exception. But you can't just coast by on this one thing. You have to do better, you have to do more. But the one thing that AEW cannot match with their product right now is this type of story that truly has big dick alpha male energy to it. They just can't. AEW can do other things and they can engage and excite their audience in different ways. But a Brock versus Roman type of feud, especially with the dynamics that play out here, they can't touch this in this way right now. They just can't. And if you... If that bothers you, go fucking cry about it in the comments or somewhere else where somebody gives a shit. Because you know I'm right. AEW could do other good things. This right here, they can't do. So you are at least giving the audience, even though it is Brock versus Roman again, at least the dynamics have changed. The story has changed. It does still feel fresh and different, but it feels like something big fight. And the way this was done here, like... Having Paul Heyman backstage earlier in the night and thinking it was his tribal chief and it was Brock Lesnar. And then when Roman says, I'm going to my ring. Like the big dick alpha male energy in this was just oozing all over the place. And then when Roman's talking about he appreciates, you know, Paul Heyman's honesty. And then he's mad at the Usos for losing, but they're family so we can figure it out. But Paul Heyman's not family. And Paul Heyman's talking about... He wasn't trying to protect Brock Lesnar from Roman Reigns. He was trying to protect Roman Reigns from Brock Lesnar. He fired his ass! I mean, this made for really good television. 
And there's so many different dynamics here, like Brock coming out, you know, like leaves you questioning a lot of things, makes you think, hey, potentially day one, this title reign could o could end. Makes you think that, hey, Paul Heyman could go back to Brock Lesnar. Makes you think that, hey, could this potentially be just one big ruse that was even orchestrated by the Tribal Chief and Paul Heyman to suck Brock Lesnar in? Like, there are a lot of different possibilities you could go with here. But this final segment was fantastic. It's just a problem that the only thing that's fantastic on this show on a consistent basis is anything involving Roman and Brock. And as much as that's great in its own pocket of the show, you got three quarters to seven eighths of a show that's shit that we don't care about. Got to be able to figure out other ways to throw out a couple of other things that we could care about in a similar fashion. And we just don't have that right now. So SmackDown is exactly what I expected to be this week. Largely a bore if it didn't involve Brock and Roman. And that's not okay. That's not a good thing. And that is something that heading into 2022, the WWE is going to have to fix. And no, taking the strap off of Roman fixes none of those problems.